In the last few videos, I spent some time showing how to build a Docker container backed GitHub action, as well as publish that to the marketplace, which you can see here. The action we created simply takes an issue and allows us to assign ourselves to it by adding a comment with the word doc take. Well, technically the phrase doc take. So before I jump in, I just wanna ask if you're looking to get action traction, consider hitting that subscribe button and crunch that Taco Bell. So if you have a video that you have in mind and you'd like me to produce, just leave a comment below and I will work on it. So I've got this actually running in my GitHub repo. This is the code that powers my swag store for open source. Uh, I wanted to go ahead and add this new YAML file to power this action, because uh, I want be people to be able to take issues whenever they want and see problems with the, the site. Uh, I put the site together really quickly, so there's some issues and I'm getting a lot of help in the CSS department. So I went ahead and copied the example workflow from GitHub Marketplace listing and added it to my project. So any contributor can now grab issues. For the most part, most action creators provide context inside their marketplace listings or in their readmes on how to use actions, which is pretty helpful. So, which is why I did it. Here I'm just naming the action workflow, assign a contributor. I'm also running this action based on an issue comment. There are a number of webhook events that you can leverage to trigger actions. Uh, definitely check out the documentation for more on that. Now that this file is here, I can commit this directly to my branch and move over to show you how this works in the code. I've extracted all the context of the actions into my action.yaml file. Uh, which I'm going to talk about in one sec. But if you were not aware, you can actually view the source of actions by clicking directly to the repo uh, to see how these actions work from the marketplace listing. Now in the code, I wanted to talk through how I set this up before, which is leveraging a Docker file and entry point.sh. Uh, the reason I wanna bring this up is because, well, I didn't notice in my pr previous video, but I was actually getting errors and I highly doubt uh, the hundreds of you that actually watched that video uh, found this error and it was probably just me that found it. So if you watch the video now, you won't actually get the error anymore. Uh, but the fix that was needed was actually to change the SH to bash. Now there are minute di differences between the two, uh, bash and SH, uh, which are not exposed in my local environment using uh, Mac OS. But within the actions Linux environment, uh, all those all those differences were actually uh, exposed and was actually preventing my uh, actions from running. So. If you didn't know, Bash is hard, and uh, I'm still sort of trying to figure it out. Just mentioning that as an FYI. I bring this up because GitHub has shipped a new feature in the last few weeks, which is a way to create composite run steps. Now, this allows you to take our Bash scripts that are normally powered by Docker and containers. You know, the, the one I just showed you and also spent a couple of videos talking about. Well, I don't actually have to use a Docker container to power my actions. I can now use a composite run step to actually run my bash directly within my action YAML file. This is important because the error that I had prior, I would not actually get because I could run bash in the environment that it would be expected to run uh, with any, without any other issues. So I'm gonna actually transfer my Docker power action to a composite run action. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is actually delete my Docker file in my entry point SH um, because I actually don't need this anymore. But before I delete the entry point SH, I'm gonna grab the context here because that's all I need to make this action work. Um, so now in my project, I only have a license file and a readme as well as my action.yaml. The next change I wanna make is actually not have this run based on a Docker file. I'm gonna have this run on composite, which is the, the new feature that is just shipped. And inside my action.yaml file, I can now add steps, uh, very similar to the way you add action run steps inside of your workflows, inside of your repositories. And the biggest difference between running this directly in my repo's workflow file is I can actually, now this action can be shareable amongst all my projects. So I don't have to rewrite the script every time I wanna have this run. Also a reminder, if you forgot 20 seconds ago, I don't have a Docker file anymore. So no reason for to have, have that run on Docker. Now my action runs without me having any knowledge of Docker or VMs or what this is powered by. Uh, I'm gonna change that script to bash uh, just to make sure that this works. I wanna shout out this video to Crazy Max who walked me through how to do this on my Twitch stream. If you're interested in watching me build GitHub Actions from scratch, I stream every Tuesday and Friday live on Twitch. I'll have a link to my channel in the description below, uh, but also check out Crazy Max's actions. He has a lot of Docker powered actions as well as actions I use every day for my GitHub pages. I hope you found this video insightful. If you did, definitely let me know in the comments below and check out my other videos on GitHub Actions, as well as my videos on, as well as my new video on GitHub Pages. That time, and I had a goal of getting on stage and doing a talk, 
I was like, you know, I'll do this too as well. And uh, so I submitted the talk and got accepted. Luckily, it got accepted like in August and the talk wasn't until February. So I had about six 